Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Maria Green here with a um, really cool arts, art and spirituality uh, video that we're having a special uh, guest today, Zoe Foster from uh, Devon, England. And uh, I'm really excited to be talking with her because uh, I met her a long time ago, never in person, but online in <clears throat> one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the programs we both attended and we have been friends ever since. And it's a <clears throat> good thing about uh, social media, you can uh, make friends all over, all borders and continents. And I, I really love that because you get different views. So I uh, wanna jump into this and uh, it's um, <clears throat> really a, a video about art and spirituality and how we can all benefit from uh, making art and uh, also to to find ways to express ourselves however and uh, <clears throat> i know zoe has a fabulous journey to tell you but i want to read just uh, a little bit about her she is an embodied expression artist and writer and a facilitator and she is an energized brilliant so uh, through embodied expression, the uh, creator, and creator of sacred expression yoga. So there's a lot of knowledge uh, in one person. <laughs> so uh, I want to welcome Zoe to our video here, and uh, I'm really happy to have you. So, Hi, Maria. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been such a, a joy to connect with you in this way and uh yeah i really look forward to chatting yeah so we'll start right right off the bat with uh, i would like for you to tell me how your journey has been since i met you you were when i met you i think you were a yoga teacher with some uh interest in art and expression but the floor is yours oh wow okay really really uh yeah, diving in. Um, so I my my kind of core of my story really is um, a massive healing crisis um, in my 30s. And that really instigating my whole well being journey. So physical, but also, you know, mentally, emotionally, and ultimately spiritually. Because so much I realized so much of of what I was experiencing through symptoms um you know I, I had when I say I had a healing crisis I mean I was healing myself from a lifetime of multiple chronic issues um all of which were compounding and getting worse as I got older instead of you know kind of disappearing <laughs> yeah and um and I realized that um, as part of that journey, I realized that so much of my symptoms, so many of my symptoms came about through suppression, um, suppression of self, suppression of emotion, suppression of my spiritual self in particular. Um, that was a big, big part of it. And, you know, even when I started down the path of, of yoga teacher training and so on, I found it really hard to access those spiritual parts of me, even to connect with the kind of deeply philosophical parts of yoga, um, you know, right down to the practicalities of uttering things like namaste or um, doing chanting or anything like that, because it felt at odds with everything that I'd been conditioned to believe you know I grew up at, um, in an atheistic household and although I would never have I don't think I ever called myself an, an atheist I definitely was probably agnostic and uh, you know believe I, I didn't believe in a higher power I didn't believe in a god and um, yeah that fueled so much of both my kind of um, trauma going through my 20s to um, my kind of expansion 
out of my 30s into my 40s. So um, it has been a big and exciting journey, really. Um, and my art really came through. I've always been an artist, but I've never allowed myself to <laughs> call myself that. Um, it's always been in me and I've never really allowed it through. Um, and it's only been in the last year honestly that I've really owned this part of me um, and allowed it to come through again so you know I last painted in this kind of not in this way at all because it's so different now but I last properly painted I suppose was about 20 years ago and um it always felt, I always wanted to come back to it, but it always felt like an indulgence and um, something that it was just kind of peripheral, honestly. It felt, yeah, it, it felt like, yeah, indulgence is the word, really. It just felt kind of like a luxury. And like, yeah, um, and like you would have to paint in a certain way, right? Yeah, like and that, le legit art. Yes, yes, and even even calling myself an artist just felt very um, presumptuous, I suppose, and kind of yeah. There's so so much bound up in that in that kind of labeling, and and yet I really feel like I'm I'm in such a happy place with it all now. I just feel the way that I paint and the way that I express myself and the way that I share that as well, it's its all from a, a really intentional energetic space. And when I'm, when I start to move m more kind of back into the, I guess the masculine, you know, kind of pushy, um, structured kind of analytical way of doing things, I know that I've, I veered off course and I just you know I make myself come back again because that's that that way of doing things was the old me and it was very very imbalanced so it's not necessarily about you know masculine or feminine it's about having a really really healthy balance of the two and for me coming back into reconnecting with that feminine aspect has been so empowering and so, so expansive for me. Yes, I, I can really see the whole development of, uh, of, uh, of your art, your style and your whole life style, if I should put it that. But uh, I, I uh, uh, always wondered about, I'm an intuitive painter too, but I always, <laughs> <laughs> it was always uh, the struggle of, uh, well, this is not good enough. This is not a, something that anybody would like and how we yeah. always judge our own uh, on art through other people's eyes that we perceive which is probably not even true and, yeah uh, yes so uh, if we go back a little to what you said about uh, your healing and then uh, how did you start then to paint not not necessarily like how you paint today but just how you started painting again um you mean more recently well how did you, you uh, get the idea that you well i'm gonna put some uh, paint on paper you know or, uh, honestly it was very um it was a it was a an urge <laughs> um there's no other way to describe it so Obviously, with all of the lockdowns and, you know, everything that we've been through in the last year, everything, you know, we were called to question everything and what normality looked, looked and felt like and what we did with our days. You know, I had set up 2020 to be the year where I took my sacred expression yoga out nationally Um and possibly even internationally to different different cities and towns and um you know i'd started the process of setting up dates to do that 
and of course all of that stopped and I suddenly had to rethink how I was going to do everything and what I was going to do and the core of sacred expression yoga is about freeing our creativity you know whoever we are whether we believe we're creative beings or not and allowing ourselves to fully embody our core expression and so I kind of had to live that journey as well myself although I was doing that and in, in other ways I hadn't really considered that I needed to do this through painting as well back in my 20s um I I said to a therapist at the time that and and this was my my early 20s um, I said to a therapist that all I wanted to be was a writer and an artist and I said that but but that's impossible it really really felt like an impossible dream you know complete utopia to to be able to say that about myself and it it did it took me virtually 20 years to kind of basically make that journey to the point where I could express myself through writing and through art and call myself a writer and an artist and to be okay with that. And that's that's kind of where I am now. But um, to come back to painting, it really was like it it was some it was something in my body that needed it. And my soul th expressing itself through my body, I just needed to get some large canvas <laughs> and to move my body you know because this is this is it's I call it kind of gestural abstra abstraction I need to move my whole body as I paint I can't just do little things and, that, and that's nothing against people who who paint in in smaller ways but for me it is a whole body experience it has to be all of me does that come from uh, your background in yoga, do you think, like being connected to your body and uh, being able to see the importance of, of expressing through the whole I being think, that you are? Yes, I think that's definitely um, part of my journey. Um, you know, I do believe we are all embodied, fully embodied beings and that we've lost that. So... I do believe that, you know, you, you might not necessarily want to paint with your whole body, but I do believe that we need to learn to inhabit and express ourselves through our entire body, not just physically, but into that emotional, um, energetic and spiritual space as well. Absolutely. Yes, I, I think we all would need more yoga in, in our lives. I know I do. But <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's easy to just live in the head and not live, not yeah. try to live from my heart at all times. And uh, um, that would show up in my art, maybe that there is yeah. like a heart expression. But it's so easy to just get stuck in my studio and just buried in my project and then I forget yeah. about my body. Which... Yeah, and it's so honestly, because we all, no matter who we are, we spend so much time on our screens and sitting and being very focused on certain things to, you know, the extent that we forget about everything else and including our body. And I was talking to somebody earlier about one of my kind of pet topics is about space and about how we how we choose whether that's intentionally or unconsciously to inhabit and expand into the space that we allow ourselves and that's got nothing to do with how big your house is or <laughs> anything right. like that it's um it's about how you how you typically move how you typically sit how you you know if you think, oh, I've got a crick in my neck, do you kind of go, uh, or do you get up and have a big stretch, you know, and you kind of really loosen it all up? 
how much space do you allow yourself to take up in everyday life and in particular how much energetic space so we all have this bubble around us um you know if you if you're in a in a lift with other people not that you probably have been recently <laughs> but if, if you're in a lift with other people you typically um you allow that bubble to have as much space as possible so if there's one other person you'll be on the other other side of the lift if there's two other people you know you'll kind of be equidistant and there's this lovely dance that kind of goes on but as you what i find is is so interesting is that when we're when we're alone is how much of that energetic space do we actually allow ourselves so do we treat ourselves as if the room is crowded with other people or do we treat ourselves as if we've got all the space we need all the air you know and kind of yeah i don't know what else to call it but yeah. that, just that energetic space around us because right. we can choose to feel expanded or contracted and sometimes we need to be contracted in order to feel safe and sometimes to feel nurtured but that's okay if it's if it's intentional and understood that that that's acknowledged about yourself if it's unconscious or you're choosing it day after day after day then i think that becomes a real problem for us for our entire well-being yes so true and uh, many of us we're not even connected to our bodies you know like it's so easy to live out here or up here and just in worry or plans or just uh, <clears throat> being interested in what's happening around us or in third dimension living, you know, like work, uh, doing laundry, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> and, and never even think farther and, uh, and not listening to the body is a big problem if we feel like we should rest and and then we don't rest and that's how everything becomes out of balance and how are you going to reach your core and your like your your passion to express it if you don't have any connection to your body and yeah that's a worldwide problem actually because of the world or the way we get we grow up and i agree and, and that's so in the much western world Yes. And there's so much emphasis on um, that we need to be productive, that we that everything that we put our hands to or our minds or our hearts to has to have an end product and make money. Yes. 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 Essentially. Yeah. Um, and that we're not allowed to just simply explore exactly when i started painting again i had absolutely no intention of or i had no vision at all of really selling what i was making it was just some i was following an urge it was something i had to do for me and um and and i but i wanted to share as well and it really was just kind of oh this is what i'm doing and this feels really good and and i and obviously it it paired so well with my message on on honoring our most sacred expression and when i started to sell paintings i was like okay okay this is really hitting a resonant note with people that you know i really believe it's not just about how beautiful something is or about how kind of stylistic it is or even the colors which are all these are all important elements obviously but um it's it's so much about the energy of a piece that we're drawn yeah. to and and what that inspires in us i think it brings us uh, back to ourselves the viewer will watch and then they can feel the resonance inside and it's their soul speaking to them and that's 
exactly yeah so tell me i know you make really big paintings uh, on the floor but tell me how you even came to do that the very first time um so yeah well <laughs> <laughs> Put it's me really on the spot here. <laughs> no, it is really it's such a great question because I had I did have my own um issues around this, which I will I will go through because it's you know it was it was a big part of my process of allowing this for myself. So I felt again that urge that I wanted to paint with my whole body and and yet I had all of the logistics of how would I do that? Not just, um, you know, physical space. We live in a very small two up, two down house. Um, so finding the space to do something like that was just kind of, it was like, you know, at that time it was inconceivable. So I started, I knew I wanted to paint bigger and so what I started to do was um, doing multi multiple panels. So um, my very first painting was just three panels of, I think it was 24 by 18 inches. And they went together. Um, and I that's how I started. So I started using kind of triple canvases, um, double canvases. And then I did, uh, yeah, I started to buy bigger and bigger canvases, basically. <laughs> That's good for you. <laughs> um, Sorry, I have and a tickle. Yeah, I have a and tickle. Oh, no. Do you know what? I'm so with you because... I've had I've had a, I've had this quite a bit recently, and I don't think. And I was having a, a conversation with somebody earlier who had the same problem, and she said, "I don't think it's anything physical. I think it's energetic. It could There's be. like a an expressive tickle at the moment." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I uh, yeah, apologize for the no, noise. It's <laughs> no, it's well, absolutely. So go back to uh, your, you had three panels and then maybe two and then what happened? Yeah, so then I was, I was, I was buying bigger and I was looking at, um, you know, online to see how big I could actually buy where it was, you know, the, the, yeah, the pre-structured can yeah, pre canvases and obviously they get very expensive. And, um, and so I was kind of looking at, you know, all of my different options and and with the lockdown and everything they were getting harder and harder to come by as well um and then I was like do you know what I'm gonna have a go at buying a roll of canvas because I want to get on it I want to get on the floor and do so and it doesn't it doesn't have to be massive <laughs> so I started um I think one of my first ones was maybe about 36 inches square. So that's that's about a meter. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe a, yeah. Yeah. And uh and that just felt wonderful, honestly. You know, just to be able to do to be able to to move my whole body, to be able to get on the canvas. Um and you know, I was sitting on it and kind of yeah yeah just really kind of getting in there basically feeling and into then, it. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly and then from there um so i you know i just I bought bought stretcher bars to to be able to kind of put it all together and from there i just i started going bigger and bigger and um as big as my space at the moment allows um i really want to get bigger but <laughs> I haven't got the space at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, tough. So you use what uh, you use um, canvas, and then what kind of uh, paint do you use? Acrylic or? Use, I use um, acrylic, but also um, m increasingly so. I've always used kind of a mix of things, um, 
but I but I'm increasingly using more ink. I really love using inks because there's they've just such a gorgeous um, vibrancy about them, and you can do. I, I just find them. I don't know. I find them a bit more magical. I don't know. <laughs> they are. They are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and uh, um, I use a little bit of oil as well. So um, specifically oil bars, which are just uh -huh. fantastic. Yeah. Um, a lot of metallics. Um, yeah, they're pretty simple, really. But I love I with the when I was using the structured canvases, I love texture. And so I would use quite a lot of gesso to uh -huh. create different textures. And that's harder on the unstretched canvases because obviously you've, you've then got to stretch it. So you can't create really kind of rigid, rigid um, textures. Having said that, I've just used, I mixed a little bit with some ink the other day on my um, newest series, which I, I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but I've got a work in progress. Uh -huh. um, and uh, and I was using that on my body to create body texture, kind of printing and stuff. Oh, so that's cool. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, what really? Not... I'm sorry. No, it's not super thick, so I think it should be. I, th I think it'll be all right. Yeah, I'm sure. What really has? Uh, I don't know. Like you said, it's the energy of the work. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what what's so beautiful about it but I when I first uh, you posted some pictures on Instagram and I went like wow <laughs> yeah, I could just feel it was like an explosion not so much colors it was just like energetically exploding in in my face but it was <laughs> more of a feeling than not yeah. just oh what well, that's beautiful colors or something it was just touched me deeply so I think Thank you really you. are on the right path with this, and uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next, you know. But I, I would like to ask you a little more about um, healing, you know, and art, but just healing in general. What kind of uh, advice could you give to people who are struggling with their health and don't have the energy to do art or any other creative? Yeah, endeavor? that's such, such a great question, because... I will relate that there was a time, you know, probably I think maybe three or four years, honestly, when I was deep in my healing crisis and even just coming, kind of starting to come out of it as well, where part of it was not wanting to be in my body because it was so traumatized it was so you know I was in perpetual pain and or discomfort and so actually I needed to be still a lot of the time I needed to just breathe and meditate and visualize and at that time, the idea of moving my whole body would have been so stressful, so stressful. Wow. So I do want to honor anybody who's in that position and also <sighs> it's easy to get stuck there because of trauma, because trauma tells us that will never be safe again i needed to continually challenge myself and i still am my you know my skin for example i'm still struggling with but it's it's a long process because it's been a lifetime of you know systemic problems that I've that I've been healing and this is the last remnants of it which I think is pretty miraculous honestly that I could have grown a whole new me <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and, and, um, you think yeah, yoga you started out with yoga to 
heal yes. some of these problems and then maybe yeah. diet and you went into yeah so it's been a myriad of things that essentially I, I would say rather than saying you know this diet and this exercise and you know it's that's that's not the right way to approach your healing, whatever it is, whatever it is you need, that's not the right way to approach it at all. Because we're all different. We all have different histories. We all have different ancestries and, you know, genetics and environment and everything. So there's no one way. And I, I really want people to understand that about their own situation it's so hard because we all want a magic bullet yeah. <laughs> you know and i still find myself thinking if i just take that supplement then it's going to magically make everything you know 100 percent better and yeah it might help but it's never the magic bullet it's never that one thing it's there's always going to be different factors and essentially what it comes down to is honoring all of ourselves. Yes, yeah, the honor to actually sit down and take stock and honor all the parts of us that don't work well and the ones that work. And then calling on the like the inner strengths, our spiritual strengths to inspire us to the next move, maybe, and the following move. And exactly you know, it's like a journey that, that probably never ends but it's yeah it, uh, <clears throat> it gets better and uh, and the healthier you get the more inspiration you have to share with other people to start their journey into exactly. wholeness and exactly. uh, i think <clears throat> i think that's uh, if i look at your art and i think that's what's going to happen down the road is that people will look at this and and say this is absolutely speaks to my heart so much and that this woman went from uh, totally having nothing going well for her to making everything work you know I think that is an extremely inspiring uh, part of, of the whole journey you know just to be able to see it's possible it's possible for me yeah. and it's possible for them and and uh, you can't make anybody do anything, but there is uh, such a strong urge in our hearts to be well, to, to live a good life, that if we start listening to that, um, then the path becomes clear. You know, maybe yeah. you're not an artist, maybe you're not a writer, yeah, maybe, exactly. <clears throat> but whatever is the purpose of your life will come forward. So yeah, but I, I, I see art, even if you don't, want to do art particularly art is a really good way to to delve into who you are and yes. even if you just stick figures but it's the emotion that all of that will bring out that that will put you right up in front of your uh resistance and your issues yeah and this is exactly what i um explore with people in my sacred expression sessions because not only is it about using your whole body so you're you know even just that in itself so like virtually all of us have body issues yeah. so and that affects the way we move the way we allow ourselves to move the way we take up space or don't the way we kind of don't want to, you know, that I've seen, obviously in my yoga journey, I've seen people who won't even stretch their limbs completely because there's a resistance. They don't want to take up all that space. They don't want to fully, whatever it is that's holding them back, there's something and it's in the body. And when we explore that through exp expressing ourselves onto the paper and moving around in it, it brings a whole new level because actually you're moving beyond the body. Even though you're using it, you're moving beyond the body to something that you're immersing yourself in. You've got this vision, suddenly got this visual kind of field that you're creating and it's deliberately not 
about creating something perfect or beautiful or pictorial. It's simply about expressing, choosing the colours that you feel drawn to, using both hands so that you're drawing on both sides of the brain and obviously moving around the paper, creating, you know, gestural movements. So again, it's not kind of analytical and you're not getting your brain involved. It's very much about drawing up what's within. And you can't, like, I haven't, I haven't had a person yet who hasn't drawn something out of themselves that they weren't expecting. But it's not, that process in other ways can be very scary. Um, it's very vulnerable. It can be very vulnerable. And the way that I have found to do this with people is that it's playful. It's fun. There's no expectation. Nobody's going to judge you. You know, what comes out, you can't kind of look at it and go, wow, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> because it's, you know, there's just none of that kind of energy in it at all. And um, I think that's what's so healing about it, is that we can harmonize and we can kind of balance everything. But then we've got to find a way of also releasing and unbinding whatever we need to as well to be able to express ourselves fully and honestly at the moment in society that's not happening it's a huge missing piece and that's a huge part of our healing as as individuals and as a planet yes if you think of little kids they express themselves freely they might not be drawing on paper, but the way they play and they they do everything fully. Yeah. And uh, it, somehow it gets uh, taken away from us uh, through the system. But uh, I have found uh, talking to people a lot about art and having little classes and things that people are really afraid of, uh, uh, of putting stuff down because they're going to be judged and also yeah. they compare themselves to other people's yes. art and we all go through that but uh you know one of my mantras is like ugly is okay <laughs> yeah yes. yeah <laughs> so if it is ugly if it's all turned into brown mud well that's okay because you expressed yeah. uh, you expressed yourself you took a step uh, into uh, exploration you know exploring all yeah the what do what could be yeah um, yeah and and again that's such a such a crucial part of the process because we've been taught that I, I don't know where this comes from we've been taught that failure is a bad thing that mistakes are you know like the the end of the world um and that we just don't allow ourselves the room the space the time the energy to explore anymore and for to lose that connection to something again that kind of end product that has to be perfect um so yeah that's that's such a such a crucial part of the process of of allowing that again of of just being in the play and enjoying yeah. it enjoying it really just being in it and part of the way I encourage that in people is that obviously, you know, saying this is absolutely not about creating something perfect or beautiful or whatever, but reinforcing that with, okay, now we're going to do something over the top. So whatever you just did, we're actually just going to, we're going to go over it again. And then right at the end, after everybody's gone away, I encourage them to release their piece in some way, for example, like burning it. So there's absolutely no attachment to it right. whatsoever. I love that. That's a great idea. You know, I found it a little uh, uh, difficult to encourage people to continue with, they, they might take a few steps into the process and then uh, they just 
don't want to do it. But uh, well, I honor if they don't want to be artists, but uh, uh, there's how do you encourage people to find their dream? You know, like what would you tell people that are kind of tried things, but they don't have any staying power in the, in a particular expression, but then they are, everybody has a gift. And how do you, how does the person find their gift? And I know that's yeah. a tough question, but. <laughs> that is a tough question. Um, everybody has their own path. I know it's a cliche, such a cliche, but I do believe everybody has their own path. I get frustrated with, you know, even just family members and um, kind of wanting to kind of push them into things that I know that they're they're just they are so gifted at. But nobody can push you into something uh, if you're not ready. True. True. You know, maybe I've... you can inspire, maybe you can motivate, but ultimately it's always down to the individual to <sighs> connect back to their core truths again and again and again, however that looks for them and to follow the nudges and to trust. There's so much trusting involved in following our ultimate path, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. And that's scary. That's scary as hell. It is scary because it's an untraveled road. You have no signposts except your own intuition. Right? But I also feel that uh, people will, maybe if, if anybody is serious about finding a true gift, uh, it's an urge. So like when you said, making art you really had an urge to do it many times during your journey and then uh, you followed it so yeah. anybody say uh, somebody has a desire to be a musician I mean, it's an easy example they would have an urge all through their life probably to yeah to, to pick up an instrument to explore whatever yeah. instruments they might be uh, interesting. It might not, but it might not be as simple as that because so for example my journey took me around the edges of being an artist there were so many kind of crossroads in my life where I chose the more conventional side of it so whether it was in my you know when I I did my first degree, I chose linguistics um, because I loved languages, I love, you know, the, everything about language and that was a great degree for me but even through that and even before that I kept thinking but I'd love to go to art college and that just, again, it just doesn't, you know, it wasn't kind of a sensible option right and then before I did my postgraduate again in a wonderful discipline I did cognitive psychology um and I did I did research in that in that um field and it was fantastic but my research ended up being um oriented on on art psychology basically the psycho psychology of art and about space and stuff so it's you know it's kind of all coming back to that yeah. now i'm in it now i'm not analyzing i'm not in the academic side of it i'm in it and it took me you know so long and so many instances of actually kind of life saying to me do you want to be on the edge of this or do you want to be in it and i think the problem is is that virtually all of us <laughs> sit on the edge we choose to sit on the edge and we yeah. choose to take the sensible option and the road that is kind of paved out for us instead of what we really actually our heart our soul actually craves and where that deep urge wants to take us yes 
and also our education it's uh, all everything is a pattern or a schedule you fit into yeah. so we forget about any urges that we might have had but i i believe that everything we do is not wasted like you, your degrees your interests all your interests so uh, will yeah. kind of pull together into the wholeness the wholeness of being like you talked about so it all has a place uh, yeah and absolutely but for artists um i think the only way to really overcome there's always resistance the only way to overcome any kind of uh, doubt or resistance is to actually do art make art yeah uh, i encourage people to if they don't know what to do then uh, copy somebody else and then do your own you know out of that you can develop your own style your own yeah but yeah it's an ongoing journey it never ends so you can i feel the resistance every day when i go into my studio but i said well let's see what happens today so yeah I'm open to it yeah and that's exactly the space to get into and to learn to get into is that kind of space of let's just see what happens and and again not attaching to the outcome and that for me that's why I you know I follow that path of of energy art because there's no way that unless I'm in a bad mood or something <laughs> or I can't get into that space and in which case I just won't paint because that's that's not what I that's not the space i want to create from but when because all of my art is basically it's an intentional energy that i want to create visually so there's no way of really getting that wrong <laughs> yes <laughs> i i hear you and uh, i think that momentum carry us through too it's like uh somebody starting with a new uh art supply you go well how are we going to use this you know various paints or crayons yeah you feel like you're just taking little baby steps into it but then once you have experienced it it just becomes a second nature you don't even think about it yeah you just throw yourself into a piece and that's how we move forward we just keep evolving from <clears throat> taking baby steps into being uh, uh, I know what how it's like driving a car. You know how you you don't even think about it. You just kind of yeah. drive it, and then the challenge becomes: well, how do I expand? How do I expand myself to embrace uh, greater ways to artistic expression? So that's, yes. that, that's uh, always a challenge. But <laughs> do you have any last uh, advice to anybody who wants to either do uh, healing or get into a healing journey or or art or any or yoga even <laughs> <laughs> do you have any advice to, to people just the beginners um i would say just learn to allow yourself to follow the nudges so when we feel kind of that inner urge to follow something or to look something up, or to try something out, so often we, we just push it back down, or we dismiss it, or we think, ah, oh, that's nothing, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And honestly, that's where the magic lies. That, I really believe, that's where the key to our ultimate health well-being happiness joy everything it lies in following and trusting those nudges and sometimes you're gonna fall down and that's okay <laughs> yes follow a dead end and then go back and go down another it's, uh, exactly. it's a lot exactly. of trial and error but uh, it's important, like you said, you know, to trust that intuitive urge or nudge and to yeah. try to listen to them. And that will lead, uh, lead us down the path that evolves us the most. And coming, coming back to play. Yeah, to play, to play. That's uh, 
I think one of the really the main theme. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Recover yeah. that uh, spirit of childhood, really, of joy. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, because as adults, we think life is too serious and too, I don't know, there's too much happening in the world to kind of allow joy and play. They Again, they seem indulgent, they seem selfish, which is entirely the opposite of what they really are. <laughs> exactly, yes, for sure. Well, this has been really interesting. I'm going to put some uh, links to Zoe's, um, uh, like links to her social media and uh, website. Do you have any? Uh, yeah. But do you, uh, which uh, media do you spend most time where people can uh, catch you most easily? I'm mostly on Instagram because I love the visuals and right. the fact that certainly in my feed, I don't know about anybody else's, but my feed is quite inspirational. And um, uh, in terms of, you know, the people I choose to follow and so on. Uh, yeah, I, I find kind of Facebook more and more these days um, rather anxiety inducing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So you're but, under uh, Zoe Foster on Instagram and people can uh, Zoe K M Foster. K M yeah. Foster. Yeah. And what's your website? So, And that's zoekmfoster.com. Okay, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you so much. And it's been a real pleasure to spend thank time you. with you here yeah. and learning more about you and your art. I, I am really pleased to be following your journey. Thank you so much. It's been such a joy to connect with you and to chat through all of these themes that I think are just so, so needed to be talked about more and more and more these days, honestly. Yes. Yeah, that's why I wanted to even do this uh, little chat because uh, any way to inspire others to just uh, take, a, take that step, take that one yeah. step. So thank you again and uh, I see you online. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye.